Ah, Spider-Man 3, how you love to be hated. More so loved than hated these past few years, which makes me so happy you totally deserve it. But still a lot of hate. If there's one thing about this movie that's been consistently well received over the years though, it's the score by the talented Christopher Young, and for very good reason. This has to be one of my favorite comic book movie scores of all time, maybe even one of my favorite film scores in general. And uh, hot take incoming. I might even like it slightly more than Danny Elfman's scores for the first two installments of the trilogy. Don't get me wrong, those are absolutely brilliant too, but they haven't come close to being as memorable and iconic as Spider-Man 3's in my personal opinion. I always just find myself coming back to it again and again and again. There's just something that's always stood out to me about it and I think I know why now. What I'll be doing today is breaking down the score and explaining why I think it works so beautifully. Let's begin! So, before we jump right into the score, there's a little word you guys need to be familiar with, if you aren't already, of course. That word is leitmotif, a recurrent theme throughout a musical or literary composition having to do with a particular person, idea, or situation. Now, I'm not going to pretend I'm some kind of musical expert, because I'm about as musically inclined as a sock puppet, but I am familiar with leitmotifs and motifs in general because of how widely utilized they are. They could be used in everything from film scores to poems, but the main idea is that they're all used to represent something. One example of this in film is the Imperial March theme playing in the Star Wars saga whenever something happens centering on Darth Vader or the Empire, or even if they're just alluded to in some way. The Imperial March is their leitmotif, that theme represents them. One thing I adore about Spider-Man 3's score, and the Raimi Trilogy scores in general, is how they establish their most crucial leitmotifs right out of the gate. As we see cast and crew names, movie snippets, and other CGI wonders fly across the screen in the opening credits, we're introduced to the leitmotifs of the hero and the villains. They almost serve as a way to introduce these characters before we even see them, giving us an idea of what we're in for when we do see them. Spider-Man's theme, of course, is loud, proud, and, well, heroic, like in the previous two films, but there is a key difference in Young's take on it, which we'll get to in a minute. We then get to the theme of Venom, which is suitably darker and faster paced, and Sandman's theme, which is much slower paced but still menacing. What both of these themes accomplish is showing that Venom and Sandman are forces to be reckoned with, albeit in different ways. Venom's theme represents something purely evil and sinister to me, while Sandman's theme more so gives off the vibe of an unstoppable force that won't let anything get in the way. The fact that something like that could be evoked through music will always be impressive to me. Alright, now to the key difference I mentioned. Spider-Man's theme, of course, re-emerges louder and prouder than before as usual, finally segueing into the beginning of the movie. But there's one thing missing, one thing that disappoints a lot of hardcore fans to this day. Gone from Spider-Man 3's opening credits is Elfman's iconic responsibility theme from the first two films. Now, one possible explanation for this is that this theme, along with both villain themes, couldn't all be squeezed into three-something minutes of opening, but I think it goes deeper than that. A whole lot deeper, so bear with me here. See, a major theme throughout the entire film is Peter Parker's struggles with his ego and how it slowly goes on to cause his fall from grace. Even in the first scene of the film, his head seems a little swollen, and I think this is why the responsibility theme was cut. At this point in his arc, Peter cares more about his own self-interest and how great things are going for him than truly putting himself before others, so is it really right to call him responsible? Heck, we don't even hear the responsibility theme until the very end of the film, when Peter finally relearns his lesson about what it means to be responsible and comes to terms with his ego. That's just one of several examples of how the score tells a story of its own, how we can not only get a feel for emotional beats and character arcs through dialogue and visuals, but also music. My personal favorite example of this, though, is the fact that Sandman has not one, but two themes. We hear his villainous leitmotif in the opening credits, but it isn't until we see his more tragic and vulnerable side in his introduction scene that we're introduced to his second leitmotif. This one is much more somber and down-to-earth, and it really drives home Flint Marco's humanity and how much he's suffering. I'd even go as far to say that the music we first hear in the opening credits is Sandman's theme, but that second leitmotif, that's Flint Marco's theme. It's in Flint's more personal moments throughout the film that this theme plays, but whenever his efforts to pay for his daughter's surgery are halted by the police or Spider-Man or whoever, that first leitmotif kicks right back in, and Sandman doesn't let anything get in his way. 
The brilliant use of music in this movie doesn't just apply to characters, though. In pretty much every scene, all the right emotions are evoked, and that's largely thanks to the score. We get a true sense of just how well Peter's life is going in the first scene. The cheery and upbeat music actually almost makes you feel happy. When Captain Stacy is telling Peter and Aunt May the truth about Uncle Ben's death, you could feel the tension in the room and the rage building up inside Peter. You understand how much weight this situation has. All that swirling emotion finally pays off in the scene following it, with the music ramping up more and more as the symbiote makes its move until the black suit is on and the Venom theme is blaring in all its sinister glory, and you could feel all of it. If you listen to this film's music all by its lonesome without the actual, you know, film, those exact same emotions are still conveyed. Music can be a big contributor in selling the emotion of a scene, and Christopher Young delivers on all fronts. Obviously this isn't anything groundbreaking, but Spider-Man 3 does it so exceptionally well that it'd be a crime not to highlight it. I could go on about this point all day, but I won't bore you with all the nitty gritty. Another thing I love about this score is that the leitmotifs end up coming full circle too. There's some interesting irony to the happy theme from the beginning, for example, as it's also used in a much sadder sounding fashion during Peter's remorseful emotional low points. Even leitmotifs that were introduced in previous movies were given this treatment, an example being the more heroic take on the otherwise sinister Green Goblin theme when Harry comes to help Peter in the final battle. Speaking of the final battle, it has some of my favorite music in the entire film. Not only is it absolutely epic, but it also brings different leitmotifs together in such a spectacular way. When Harry and Sandman are facing off in the skies, each of their themes are fighting for dominance just like they are. When Sandman and Venom are taking turns wailing on Spidey, both of their themes are blaring one after the other. What really makes this work like a charm though is that every single leitmotif goes well with one another. The final battle's music kind of feels like a celebration of what all the leitmotifs build up to, and it's pretty clear that they were all created with that in mind. Props to you, Christopher Young. If it wasn't obvious enough already, I absolutely adore Spider-Man 3's score. The various different leitmotifs introduced are using such crafty and fulfilling thematic ways, and the music itself is of course absolutely stellar. I think that the leitmotifs and the fact that they're used so well is a huge part of what makes this score so darn memorable. Hopefully this video could give you insight on why I love it so much, and hopefully, no matter how you feel about the actual film, you can still come to appreciate Christopher Young's work on it. If you ever want to take a listen yourself, it's all completely up on YouTube. The channel where I found the entire score is RA3MJ. Hopefully I pronounced that right. So if the mood strikes you, definitely check that channel out for the score and all sorts of other film scores. Wow, that was a lot to unpack. But that's all I've got for today, and if you watched to the end, thank you so much. I put a ton of work into making this thing, and it's really my first time doing this type of video, so it's very much appreciated. I'll see you in the next one, and have a fantastic day. Or night.